Hey everyone, I'm Tejas Pizapati and I'm here with a brand new segment called The Dialogue at UX Coffee Hours. In this series, we get some of the best UX folks in the industry to answer your questions. If you have a question that you would like us to answer, please submit that at uxcoffeehours.com. It's also a platform where you can schedule a one-hour virtual coffee with a seasoned mentor to get UX advice. Today, I'm going to talk to Susan Petrick. Susan is a UX research manager at Google who served on UX research hiring committees for a long time. I'm going to ask her a few of the questions that we pulled in from the community in the last few one-on-one coffee conversations we had at UX Coffee Hours. Let's get this started. Hi, Susan. I'm really excited to talk to you now. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Tejas. Thanks for inviting me to be part of a UX Coffee Hours recording. Just to set some context, over the last couple of weeks, more than 90 mentors on UX Coffee Hours have been spending one-on-one coffee time with a lot of aspiring UX folks around the world. And we pulled in popular questions from these conversations, and I'm going to ask you some of those questions today. Sure. Sounds great. Thank you. Uh, But before we get there, can you please tell us a little about yourself, who you are, and what you do? Sure. I've been a user researcher and manager for many years. For the past nine years or so, I've been at Google. I manage the team currently of user experience researchers who work on Google Travel. So working on everything related to planning a trip or information that you need or tools that you need while actually taking the trip. My team is in the US, in Zurich, and in Bangalore. That is awesome. The questions I'm going to ask you today are very tailored to your background and experience. All right, let's get started with the first question. When you interview candidates for UX researcher roles, what kind of skills are you looking for? How does this change from someone who is directly coming out of a school for their first researcher role to someone who has already been in the industry for a while? Regardless of whether I'm interviewing someone who's right out of school or who has a lot of industry experience, I'm looking for three main things when I'm talking to someone who's a candidate for a UX research role. I want to make sure that the person has, first of all, strong core research core role knowledge so that someone is fluent in experiment design, that they know about analyzing various kinds of data, numeric data, open-ended text data. Uh, And I want to make sure that someone has a good research methods toolkit, that they're able to map questions that arise into appropriate methods and to know strengths and weaknesses of the methods. I want to make sure that someone's able to do and has knowledge about tactical design research as well as more strategic or foundational research, and that they're knowledgeable also about evaluative methods. Bonus points if someone knows and is comfortable with methods that go a little bit outside of the standard, uh, industry standard research methods. So if someone has knowledge of conjoint or max diff methods, methods sometimes more typically associated with market research, that's a plus too. Beyond core research role knowledge though, I'm also anxious to try to figure out whether somebody has the ability to work well with a cross-functional team that they know how to communicate well and have impact as a member of a team and that they represent research well. Mm -hmm. I wanna also make sure that someone has empathy for and passion for improving users' experiences. Great, thanks for that. A quick follow-up on that part over there. Um, So one of the questions that I keep getting asked by a student that I talk to especially um, is, I'm a student. I don't have a demonstrated impact like you guys in the industry have. So how do you think, um, or what do you think we should be telling someone who had this question in the mind? No one expects that people who are right out of school will have had opportunities to show large impact on actual products. But there's plenty on which one can evaluate somebody's potential to develop and be a really great researcher. Almost always as part of school, someone would have worked on projects with groups of others. So hearing about that experience and what's gone well or what's gone less well, what things people have learned from that experience often lets you have some sense of how they'll do in an industrial setting doing work with a team. In addition to that, 
some of the kinds of things that I mentioned that I'm wanting to evaluate, one can ask as a hypothetical question as opposed to a behavioral question that gets at actual real world experience. So the kinds of questions, what would you do if faced with this sort of research question? What methods would you use? What would your research plan be like? Those work well with someone right out of school as well as with someone who's been in an industry position for a while. Great, thank you so much. Um, the second question I have for you is, what distinguishes a good researcher from a great one? Like, what kind of traits do researchers you look up to have? Things that for me distinguish a great researcher from a good one are the ability to adapt where you are in terms of rigor uh, versus scrappiness. So able to find useful things to do for a team, even when there are lots of constraints in time or in resources. Uh, there are people with genuine curiosity that really want to know the answers that are going to come out of research. There are people who are curious about the world as a whole and about people as, as a whole. There are people who are patient to learn complex subject matter areas as needed if they're going to be working with expert users and who have wide ranging interests to enjoy doing so. They're people with really great listening skills. People who are self-aware know their own strengths and weaknesses and are enthusiastic about filling in any gaps and self-development. And then there are people who can communicate research results really persuasively and confidently. That people who have high impact on product teams and products and user experiences because of how persuasively and thoroughly they can bring a team along to conduct research and then communicate recommendations about it. Great. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, one last question I have for you today is um, how important is communication versus research rigor for a researcher? Communication versus research rigor. I think both are important. I want to hire people who are able to communicate really well and able to convince a team gracefully when the questions that they've identified are not really the questions that should be being focused on. But I also want someone that may not always use the most rigorous version of a method, but that at least is well aware of what that would be, um, that can adapt it, so doesn't always conduct the most rigorous research, but that knows what the caveats are when compromises need to get made to rigor. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today and for all the great responses. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thanks for including me. Hope it was helpful.